In many ways, Canada is a fascinating laboratory to understand how a large, carbon-intensive economy can start the transition to a low-carbon economy. The real politic of this is where the rubber hits the road in one of the world's largest carbon-intensive economies, and that is Alberta. And the, the, the challenge that they are facing right now and the tough issues going forward on recognizing that we are in the midst of what is likely the greatest economic transition since the Industrial Revolution. Canada is one of the world's largest oil exporters. Most of that petroleum comes from Alberta's oil sands. It is the world's third largest deposit of petroleum. The industry employs over 400,000 people. But the oil sands are also a major source of carbon emissions. Each barrel contains 430 kilograms of potential carbon emissions. But to isolate the oil from the sand also creates carbon emissions more than elsewhere. This has led environmentalists to call for a reduction in both production and the extraction of oil sands. Industry wasn't getting the access to markets that it wanted through pipelines. Environmentalists weren't winning either because we weren't getting any kind of coherent climate policy. But in 2014, Whittingham and a few other environmentalists received a curious invitation to a dinner with leading oil executives. If you want to get something done, you need that executive leadership right there at the table. And this one promised it. So I said, okay, I will go and I'll have one dinner and uh, you know, no expectations that anything else would come out of it. Dave Collier was the CEO of the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers. I think there was a healthy degree of skepticism about whether there was actually any opportunity to change that, the nature of that dialogue. There was a lot of tension in the room around the notion of can you decouple emissions from production? Uh, and industry saying yes, and environmental groups saying, well, that's really hard to imagine based on the track record. The first dinner led to more. Lots of times through this process where both sides could have said, look, this is just too hard, it's too difficult, there's no way through this particular sticky issue. However, we had a few tricks that we were using to try to keep going, knowing that, wow, wouldn't it be great if we got there. And one of those tricks, by the way, is saying, yes, and what if, whenever it's something a block came up, instead of saying yes, but, or yes, no, yes, and what if. A few months later, Albertans elected a new leftist government, which wanted a new deal for the environment. We um, let the NDP government, the new government, know fairly early into its mandate that we had been chatting. To reduce carbon emissions would take more than just lowering pollution from the oil sands. Transportation and heating would also have to emit less greenhouse gases. The new government met with economists from Canada's Ecofiscal Commission. The cardinal rule in economics is if you don't put a price on something, you will overuse it. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're overusing our clean environment. We are depleting its cleanliness. So we've got to treat it more like a commodity, not less, if we want to protect the environment. The Ecofiscal Commission suggested a simple answer. Create a carbon tax. It would apply to the fuel in people's homes and the fuel at the pump. Well, if, if you put a price on carbon emissions, then you will actually change behavior uh, because you're shifting relative prices in the economy and people respond to relative price changes and so they'll use less gasoline or they'll heat their house less or they will uh, switch to a more fuel efficient car or take fewer airplane trips. I mean, that is economics 101. Meanwhile, the dinner group had to solve the oil sands problem how to reduce the absolute amount of carbon emissions. 
And I think if there's a breakthrough in all of this is we actually got the conversation onto emissions rather than production. You know, we uh, dislike the emissions. We don't necessarily dislike the barrels. And the barrels is part of Canada having and Alberta having a robust economy that produces jobs. So let's find a way to really go after those emissions. The solution was simple. There would be no limit on the number of barrels produced. But there would be a limit on the carbon emissions created through the extraction of oil. It was up to the oil companies to find ways to reduce these emissions. The carbon from the barrels would be controlled through taxes on consumption, not production. The time frame allows technology and innovation to have an impact. It doesn't happen overnight. On November 22, 2015, the Alberta government held a press conference to announce the New Deal. This is the day we step up, at long last, to one of the world's biggest problems, the pollution that is causing climate change. The initial response was, wow, you know, the sound of jaws hitting the floor, out of amazement. Uh, a little bit of a sense of surprise that we could actually get, all, get that diverse group on the stage, that some of them would stand on the stage. It's a game changer, and will change the debate about the oil sands industry doing its part to address climate change. A sense of accomplishment that we were actually able to do something that people had basically said you'll never do. Alberta and Canada went to Paris weeks after that, the big Paris Climate Conference, and the question of the day, the question du jour in Paris was, how did you pull that off? People could not believe it. And I think it takes um, industry and in the environmental community and others who see an opportunity to move the agenda forward more constructively, to be prepared to engage, to be prepared to lead, to be prepared to take the criticism that comes with leading, because there is a lot of that. The question for countries all over the world is, where do we see ourselves in this great economic transition? And more importantly, Will we deliberately be building the capacity and the financing and the institutional tools to get us where we need to get to? What can we learn from others and what can others learn from us?